What's up and good afternoon guys, welcome back to another video. I am glad to finally see sunshine. You saw from the beginning of this video, I started to work on the hunting blind and uh, well, it started raining and then it rained for two days in a row. We're finally back to sunshine though, back to beautiful weather and we're back to working on the hunting blind. So on the day that you saw that little time lapse, uh, I actually got these soffits built on the sides here. So obviously I didn't want the roof ending just like flush with the side of the building. So I just bumped it out, um, those blocks there are six inches, so six inches plus another give or take three with the uh, two two buys there. You got a nice nine inch little bump out. Uh, now when you look at that compared to the front bump out here that is almost like two feet, I might have gone a little wild there and I probably should have cut that a little slimmer, but at this point is what it is, that's staying. Uh, then I took a two by six and put a nice fascia board all the way around so everything up underneath there is two by four and then that edge board that you see going around there is two by six that way it kind of looks more like a traditional house a lot of people think i'm going crazy building this thing which i am but um i wanted it to look good like you see it from my house you see it when you drive up the driveway i don't want just some shack on stilts like making my property look trashy so like most things that we do we're gonna end up making it nice this is as far as i got before it just started raining too much i even had to put the gopro away because uh, it was just getting pelted with rain but let's take you guys up there and give you a little little look-see actually haven't been up here since the rain stopped but i think we're gonna be good no puddles no nothing weird and i cannot wait to get these walls up because we got just just enough of a ocean breeze blowing this way that's making it kind of cold so really anything we build out here guys is just a uh it's just a donkey scratcher that's all what's what do you want your donkey scratcher to look like you want it to look like a fence you want it to look like a uh, hunting blind before we go any further up top because uh being up on that roof number one by yourself is no fun that is a solid Close to 20 feet off the ground up there. And there's a little bit of wiggle in the structure. Obviously the plan is to put knee braces on. That's what I got cut right there. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead and slap those on right now. That way we eliminate any of the wiggle that's in this entire building. And we're gonna be locking these in with these five inch timber screws. And again, using the Hercules uh, brushless impact, which drives these things with no issue at all. A little hard one handed here. Probably should've got this one started. <laughs> Go. Now, because I don't like the way that that tore into there, uh, we're gonna use the Hercules paddle bits or spade bits, whatever you wanna call them. And let's just kind of recess this first before we actually send that timber screw in for a little cleaner appearance. Again, no issue for the Hercules. That's a seven eighths paddle bit through a four by. Now I got three of the four sides uh, with the knee braces on there because I ran out of four by fours and I ran out of the timber screws. But I gotta say, this thing is like way more solid up here with those knee braces. Now, one thing I should have done is I should have got my blocking up in between those little rafters there. Cause it's kind of a pain about to do it after the roof sheathing is on, but I don't have my table saw here to cut that little uh, bevel that needs to be on there, which is gonna look something like this. I did this one by hand, but my small circ saw uh, doesn't have enough depth to uh, get the exact angle that we need. So we're gonna slap those in a little bit later. So for right now, we're gonna work on getting our wall sheathing up. But let me tell you guys, it is no fun <laughs> carrying these four by eight sheets up this ladder that's already not on a flat surface. Uh, yeah. And also, again, don't mind that end piece right there. That one's not attached yet. Now, it's probably not the uh, super proper technique here, but I'm just using screws to attach this. They are exterior coated. And uh, another hot tip for you guys, if you guys can get anything with a torque set on it, right, which is that head right there. Um, this is a T25. Obviously, there's a T25 bit right there versus uh, getting anything with a Phillips head. These do not strip anywhere near as much as a Phillips head does. These are only inch and five eighths uh, screws, but if you can get them with the Torx option, do it over a Phillips head and uh, you'll just be much happier in life. So let's just get us a rough measurement. There we go. Now, at least we don't have a full sheet to carry up, but let's carry this booger. Guys that sheet full houses, you guys are animals, man. It is a, uh, oh jeez, there's, there's our loose board. <laughs> Sheathing is a whole nother world. Now, I just realized I am a dummy and did not flip this sheet around like I said I was gonna, but uh, at this point she screwed off, she lives there. We'll just put a couple of nails here for spacing. 
If you don't want your two boards butted up against each other, uh, you guys can see when stuff gets wet, it swells. Obviously, it's been rained on for the last couple of days. And well, when that happens, you don't want your two boards to buckle. You want some room for expansion. Now, this side is going to get a little tricky. Uh, it's kind of high up in the air. I put this 2x4 right here that I can rest the OSB on. Uh, but we're going to try to slide it up the ladder, slide it in place, smack it against there. And hopefully it doesn't blow away because, of course, the wind picks up right now a little bit. Now that we're moving these big sheets. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, man, well. <laughs> okay, so much for that idea. Plan B is climb up there with it and just slide it out on that board. I feel like I'd rather be here though. Let's give this one more shot. I'm not gonna fail on one, one go at this. Like I said, I commend you guys that do actual house sheathing for a living. Making more progress here. We're looking better. There we go. We're just gonna put one screw in to hold this. Then we're gonna go up there and make sure she's in the right position. Working solo on this stuff is no fun. I don't know if he's gonna be here in this video, but our buddy Dedek is coming back. So we have some help on the way. Either halfway through this video or by the next video, Dedek will be here to help me. I was worried that this room would feel a little bit small. Uh, I knew all the windows would help, but now that we're in here with the sheathing on, this is obviously, um, obviously we still have to do interior wall stuff, which is gonna make it feel just a little bit smaller, but there is plenty of room in here for like two to three people if you felt so inclined or really one person. I'm gonna end up putting blocking in this wall, I'll probably put blocking up there. That way I think what I wanna do is attach a hammock. That'll probably go at like an angle. There'll be. A, I'll put some blocking there so we can drill in an anchor on that side and an anchor over here and we'll kind of add an angle like lengthwise across here. We'll end up hanging a hammock. Now getting this next sheet, that's gonna be interesting. I don't think I could do it from the ground. It's gonna have to be done from up here. Now I'm not entirely sure I'm gonna be able to get that next sheet by myself, but if we're gonna have a chance, we gotta open these windows up so I can like grab it and I, I don't really know. It's probably not gonna be a good idea to even try it, but either way, these windows gotta get cut open, so. And no, I have not fully screwed this off yet. Okay, so we've got that sheet cut. I'm gonna figure out some type of little something up there to hold that up. And we'll, while we're at it, we might as well grab a box of screws and up the wobbly ladder we go. So here is what I've come up with. I just screwed a two by four on and then I slapped another one in front of it just to create a little shelf. That way this thing can't like fall off a lip like we did down there where we just had the one two by four, but I had better control to push in. Here we're gonna have to slide it down. So I made a nice little channel for it to sit in, slide down. Ugh, come on, booger. Oh no, that two by six is gonna be in the way. Uh, we almost have to come under this way and then go. Oh, then you're not gonna be able to come over top of that. All right, this plan has already failed. Maybe I can do it without this board on there. We're gonna take this board completely off. We're just gonna use this now as a double wide ledge there. So I'm gonna try to lift this out. Oh, it's kind of gonna get in my way. I just hope it doesn't hit that truck. I should probably move the truck, but I'm too dumb for that. Let's, let's see what happens here. Yeah, I don't really like this either. And the wind is taking this board. Now it ain't much, but I wonder if, I uh, hope that's, that's not low enough. I wonder if I give myself a handle. Some type of handle here. That way we can grab it from the backside. Jesus. 
this is gonna be my last attempt here on my own and then it's just not worth the risk of something bad happening so i've got this piece on here if i can get past this keep straight and then i've got another piece up there that hopefully once we're in we'll keep it from wanting to do this until i can get a better hand on it and hopefully this little handle i put isn't going to be in the way i think i pushed that out far enough but attempt number 52 Let's go. Okay, guys. So far, I'm feeling better about this. Come on. Little out there, little in. There we go. There we go. I wish I could say the hard part was over, but I don't know if that's true. Now we gotta get her into place, get our spacing right, and screw this dang thing off. Now in order to fully screw this off from that side, we gotta open these windows up, so I just basically got to where I could reach to throw a couple of screws in, but uh, let's get these boogers opened up. Now, this is as far as we are going to get today, but the windows are all opened up. Oh yeah, looking good. She is coming along. Absolutely love it. But I gotta run to the warehouse right now and get all the Work Forward orders out. And again, a huge thank you to you guys that support WorkForwardApparel.com. If you guys don't know what Work Forward Apparel is, it's a brand that we started in 2014. And basically our philosophy is to restore pride in blue collar work, right? So if you guys haven't heard the story, um, basically when I was in high school, the teachers would always go around the room like, oh, you know, what colleges are you guys applying to? And it was like the known thing, right? Like, oh, you're supposed to apply to college. That's how you're gonna make it in life. And I would always be like, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think that's for me. I think uh, I'd actually like to work in construction. And mind you, I was a 4.0 student, um, honors class, is like I wasn't the kid eating glue in the back the teachers would always get taken aback by, and then they would try to make me the example of like well you can go you know break your back all day like Ryan wants to do or you can go to college and be successful and so I took that motivation uh, went straight into construction right out of high school started my own company at 25 years old and uh, have been going ever since so work for apparel is basically our motto is if there's anything you want in this life you got to be willing to work for it it applies to blue collar and white collar but my main premise was to, again to restore pride in blue collar work and get the next generation excited about blue collar work because there's oodles of people with degrees now that can't even use them because there's too many people to fill those jobs and there's not a lot of guys signing up to be plumbers so guess who's gonna make more money the plumber so I'd be honored if you guys would check out workfortapparel.com we've got a lot of really cool merch we've got some jerky we got a bunch of cool stuff over there and I'm gonna head there right now and pack up all your orders so we'll jump back on this in the morning Apparently the uh, supervisors are just micromanaging today, just staring at me. Now I decided to just go ahead and knock out the uh, ladder slash staircase up into this thing. I got sick of climbing up wobbly ladders. I feel like at any moment, one of these days, that ladder's just gonna whoop, and there goes Rhino. Originally my plan was gonna be like a ship's ladder, which is kind of a hybrid between a staircase and a ladder, but it leans a lot more towards ladder. It's very, very steep, but you can kind of climb it without your hands if need be. So that was my original plan, but then I decided you're gonna be carrying stuff up here. So it's probably better it's more staircasey. So this is a little steep for a staircase, but it's gonna get the job done. Um, and it's just all two by eights. I'm building it as simple as you can build a staircase without actually cutting stringers for the, um, for the treads to sit on top of, I'm just measuring, screwing in from the sides. It's not gonna handle a hippopotamus walking up it, but it'll handle anybody that I know's weight going up it. So just to really keep math out of this, all I'm doing is I'm squaring down from this step. Same on both sides. And again, this is like the simplest way without having to do any math to build a staircase. And then I'm doing uh, my rise is six and a half inches. 
So basically from tread to tread is six and a half inches. Obviously that can vary. Now, is that gonna work out 100% accurately down to the ground here where we have an exact six and a half inch step? Probably not, because I didn't do any math to actually calculate what we needed. But if there's one step down here that's a hair bigger or a hair shorter, um, it's all the way at the bottom. And then I'm just taking my treads, lining it up on that squared mark as well as our height mark. And I'm putting a screw on the back side here. And then I just run my level on the front there and uh, bring it up to level. And I'm using some of these six inch screws. It's really locker in place. Ended up working out pretty decent here on our layout. I actually do have room if I wanted to put another step in. It would be about there, which is a little low. So I think I'm just gonna leave it this high. It's like, I don't know, from like actual dirt level right there, maybe seven, eight inches to that first step. I don't think it's worth putting one that's basically at ground level and it's super comfortable to walk up, super sturdy. So it's gonna make it nice for bringing up these sheets of OSB. I probably should have done this from the beginning. So I wasn't trying to get OSB sheets up the ladder. One change we're gonna be making is this window right here is gonna be shrinking from a three foot by three foot to a uh, 30 inch wide by 36 inch tall. I'm just going off of the cheapest windows I can get at Home Depot and I spent a thousand dollars basically on windows today. But to get a three foot by three foot that opens up and down versus the side to side, you gotta go with a much more expensive window. The ones that Home Depot carries um, that are three foot by three foot are only side sliders. And I want obviously like a full width of opening here. So again, just kind of going off what they had in stock is a 30 inch by 36 that does open up and down. So we're just gonna shrink this opening a little bit. Gone ahead and cut a couple of two by fours here. And we're just gonna pad this out uh, roughly six inches. Now I'm a little bit bummed that this window has shrunk, but uh, we've got, <laughs> got plenty of windows in this space. So it's not the end of the world to shrink her down like that. Um, now it gives us room you know, to mount a little, a little TV up in the corner or something like that. So we're gonna get our measurements here. Oh yeah, we should have added stairs a long time ago. Should have done it right when we built the deck. This is nice. And we have a complete wall. This is definitely on the sketchier side of things we're gonna be doing on this project. Don't worry guys, I braced it. <laughs> bracing that's doing probably absolutely nothing. <laughs> Would you guys get on this or am I crazy for doing this? I'm probably crazy for doing this, but sometimes you just gotta get her done. Ooh, that is a, barely a fit there. All right. Woo, little sketchy. It is a good thing I don't weigh that much. But now we can get up in here, measure out my blocking here figure out what our uh, bevel or miter is that needs to get ripped on this and uh, cut it on the table saw down there. Now the one cordless tool I don't own is a cordless table saw. So we're gonna take the old Honda generator up there to uh, power her cause it's quicker just to do this and run out 200 feet of cord. Let's see, it's been about a week since Papa Ronald fixed this thing. She fires up really easy. Oh yeah. The old girl is back. Gotta give Paparato credit, guys. He said he got the thing running good, and well, the thing is running good. Now we'll get the old generator fired up. But yeah, first pull. Can't beat that. If I use the table saw more often, I would probably upgrade to a cordless one, but I don't use it very often. I bought this one. This is the uh, skill saw one. So it was the first worm drive. Uh, table saw and that's why I bought it because it sounded like it would be powerful and this thing's great. I love it um, Again, I just don't use them very often. So no point in buying two table saws got a little test piece. I made here Let's just see if see if that's gonna work. Oh That is that is just beautiful Yeah, I'm liking that I'm liking that all right
I gotta say, there is nothing more satisfying than a good fit. Went ahead and got blocking on both sides done up top there. Obviously, we still gotta put the OSB on the roof. Also got this window cut out, so now we get a true feel of what it's like looking around here with the panoramic windows. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. Still need to put the OSB on the wall behind me, but I don't wanna do that because, well, I kinda screwed up and put my bracing there for my little, my little scaffold set up outside there. I should have put the sheathing on first. So that's about as far as we're gonna get in this video. Derek is coming in tonight. So tomorrow we're gonna jump back on uh, getting this thing wrapped, getting the windows in, and uh, yeah, trying to get this thing dried in because we got rain coming again. <laughs> so as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. And don't forget to give this video a like, hit a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best, I'm out. Damn. Uh.